دعوتك ربي ومن لسواك فيا رب حقق دعاء من دعاك دعوتك والقلب في فرحة يناجيك يا خالقي في علاك وأنت البصير وأنت العليم بحال ونور الحجام انطياك رأيتك ربي في كل شيء فزاد اليقين بقلب رآك ففي الزرع في الضرع في الأنس بانت بدائع صنعك بعض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا يا رب العالمين رب الشحل صدري وسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In Nottingham Islam Information Point, we always go through every Bulughul Maram halaqa that is every Friday after Salatul Maghrib. As usual, we are continuing with the halaqa of Bulughul Maram and we are on chapter 10 of Kitabu Salah, the book of the prayer. And chapter 10 is about the prayer in congregation, okay, where we pray in group. Okay, rather than individual and the imama, imama means imamite, the one uh, responsibility of the imam or how the imam, uh, uh, any ahadith or any evidences that concern, concern what? Concern the responsibilities of the imam. Okay, so the hadith that we'll go through today is uh, from Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Okay, عن أبي بكر رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه انتهى إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو راكع. فركع قبل أن يصل إلى الصف ثم مشى إلى الصف وذكر ذلك للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم زادك الله حرصا ولا تعد رواه البخاري وزاد أبو داود فيه فركع دون الصف ثم مشى إلى الصف This particular hadith that I'm about, I'm about to give you the meaning of it, it actually applies to all of us actually, especially those who are coming and trying to join the salah. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that he reached the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam while Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was going to the ruku, while he was in ruku, rather. So he, meaning the narrator, the rawi, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, bowed before reaching the row. Okay? To get the raka'ah. To put it in a simple way, to get the raka'ah, so that the, uh, the ruku'ah is not missed, he just made the ruku'ah without joining the row that he's supposed to join. Okay. He mentioned that to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for further clarification. So in this hadith, we do find a benefit that even if you do anything and you're not sure whether it is right or wrong, ask someone who is, who is knowledgeable. Based on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالزُّبُرِ Ask the people of the remembrance, of the people of the knowledge. A dhikr here is, uh, is known as knowledge. إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Meaning if you do not know. بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالزُّبُرِ Meaning with evidence. Okay. And with zubur. So, look, here we find this benefit actually. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned this particular action that he did. He went to the ruku' without joining the row. Okay, he made the ruku'ah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the ruku'ah, he made that ruku'ah with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but outside the row. He mentioned this to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, uh, mentioned and said to him that may Allah increase your eagerness. Zadakallahu hirsa. May Allah increase your eagerness. Wala ta'ud. Wala ta'ud means what? Do not repeat. Okay? Do not repeat. It is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, this particular hadith, until here. Now, Imam Abu Dawud, rahmatullah alayhi, in his sunan, he has it, and it is uh, uh, added by Abu, Imam Abu Dawud, rahmatullah alayhi, where he said that he has this narration, that, فَرَّكَعَ دُونَ الصَّفِ ثُمَّ مَشَى إِلَى الصَّفِ He bowed before reaching the row, then walked and joined the row. Okay, Rasulullah prohibited this. Okay, so what we learn from this hadith before we go for the uh, uh, other issues, 
Rather, let's continue with uh, uh, with uh, the mas'ala that we find over here. Rasulullah prohibited Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu not to repeat what he did. Meaning, going to the ruku' before reaching the rope. Okay. So, all of us, when we are coming to the salah, we need to make sure that we do not do the ruku' before reaching the rope. But there is another thing though. What we do is we run towards getting the ruku' so that the raka'ah is not missed or the unit is not missed. That is also not permissible. Inshallah, in, uh, maybe in, in next hadith we will find it. So here Rasulullah said that do not repeat. Wala ta'ud. Regarding this, Shaykh al-Asqalani rahmahullah ta'ala, the author of this book, Bulugh al-Maram, he mentions that may Allah increase your enthusiasm in performing virtuous actions, but one should not exceed the limits. Even if you are doing good actions, make sure that you do not go beyond, beyond the limit. You do not cross the limit. Okay, sometimes people get crazy, too much good deed, and sometimes, yeah, let's do this too as well, and make it part of the deen. It happens, and we are seeing it, unfortunately. What is wrong with this? Because we are doing it for Allah. Yeah, there is no deal from the Sunnah of Rasulullah to do so. Let's not do so. And that is where it should stop. For example, by racing to enter the Salah. Actually, you are crossing the limit. When you are running to the Salah, because when I was in the sujood, I heard you guys running. Not to have a go at you guys, but also it is for the adults as well. Do not run. When Rasulullah used to go to the, uh, uh, commanded the Sahaba to come to the Salah, Rasulullah commanded them to do what? To walk normal walk. Normal walking. Okay, not too fast, not too slow. Medium. The work that you usually do. Okay, that is the work that should be done. Even if you miss the ruku', that's not a problem. You should not run. Some of them even before takbirat al-ihram, say Allahu Akbar, and with that takbir goes through the ruku', unfortunately. We should not do that either. We need to say Allahu Akbar, subhanakallahumma bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruk. Then another Allahu Akbar, ruku', to the ruku', if the imam is found to be in what? In the ruku'. That is how it needs to be done. Okay. So takbirat al-ihram and the takbir of the ruku'. If you see the imam to be in the ruku'. Not <laughs> Allah Akbar. No, not that. So every one of us need to be mindful of that. So the author said that one should proceed to the prayer calmly. The hadith will come in, uh, in uh, after one hadith. Okay. So... We understand the benefit of this now. Okay, this is the benefit that we should take. Next hadith is from Wabisah ibn Ma'bad radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Wabisah ibn Ma'bad. He is an Ansari, meaning from the people of Medina. Those who helped Rasulullah those who helped the people of Mecca after they emigrated from Mecca to Medina. Okay, and he was from the clan of Asad ibn Khuzaymah. He was nicknamed Abu Qirsafa. Okay, he first settled in, uh, in Kufa, that is in Iraq. Okay, then moved to Al Hira and died about year 90 after Hijrah. Okay, Sahaba radiallahu anhu after the death of Rasulullah, they lasted 100 years. Okay, last of them, uh, what to, uh, last of them that died was in, in year 110 after Hijrah. Subhanallah, 110 after Hijrah. Radiallahu ta'ala. Can anyone tell me the name of that Sahabi who died in 110 after Hijrah? Or let me rephrase the question Who was the last Sahabi to die? No, Hamza died in year two or year three, year three rather, in the Battle of Badr. Any guess? No. He died in year 13 or 14, two and a half years after Rasulullah. No guess? Was he doing that? Prophet did dua for the dua for about his life. You're talking about uh, Amar ibn Yasar? No, not him. He had long life. That doesn't mean that he was the last one to die. He lived altogether 94 years. 
that is what I could say about here. Uh, Amr ibn Asr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. The last Sahabi to die was Abu Tufail Amir ibn Wathila radiallahu anhu. Amir ibn Wathila. Remember that. Okay. Amir ibn Wathila radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He died in year 110 after Hijrah. Or it is also said that he died in 108. Okay. So, Wabiso ibn Muhammad radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ra'a rajulan yusalli khalfa saffi wahda, fa amarahu an yu'eeda salah, rawahu Ahmad wa Abu Dawood wa Tirmidhi wa Hassana wa Sahaha ibn Hibban, wa lahu an talq la salata bin limunfaridin khalfa, خلف الصف وزاد الطبراني الطبراني في حديث وابصة ألا دخلت معهم أو اشتررت رجلا Okay, really important hadith because some of us really you know do some silly things as well okay when they come to the salah Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم saw a man praying alone behind a row so he commanded him to repeat his salah Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم saw a man praying by himself so, uh, 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 in the back, okay, behind the row. So he commanded, Rasulullah commanded him to repeat the salah. It is recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. It is recorded by Abu Dawood in his Sunan. It is recorded by At-Tirmidhi in his Sunan as well. Imam At-Tirmidhi graded this hadith to be of good chain. Hadith on Hassan. Imam Ibn Hibban rahmatullah alayhi graded this hadith to be sahih, authentic. Ibn Hibban reported from another Rawi, Talq, okay, this hadith. لا صلاة لمنفرد خلف خلف الصف. Okay. The Talq ibn Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه mentions this hadith. The prayer of a person who prays alone behind the row is not accepted. Okay. Regarding this, the person, uh, uh, the author of this book, Bulugh al-Maram, he says that whether or not a single person behind a row qualifies for the prayer, whether his prayer could be recognized as valid, is disputed point about which there are ikhtilaf, in opini uh, ikhtilaf of opinions, uh, ikhtilaf rather, differences of opinion. The fact is that one should not offer it by standing alone while jama'a is ongoing. Okay. Even though there is an issue that uh, it has among the Ahlul Ayn, there is a difference of opinion. Having said that, when the Jama'ah is going and the person is praying by himself, that is not acceptable. As a matter of fact, any Salah, while Imam is uh, 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 praying and leading the Salah, and the person by himself is praying, that Salah is Batil. Okay. Now, we still see there are people during the Salat al-Fajr, when Imam is leading the Salat al-Fajr, we still see when people come from outside, enter the masjid, first thing they do what? They would like to pray Sunnah of Fajr. Sunnah of Salat al-Fajr, that is two raka'ah. As there is a virtue about it, that khairun min dunya wa ma fiha. It is praying the Sunnah of Salat al-Fajr with Surah al-Kafirun and Surah, uh, Surah al-Ikhlas. Okay. This Salah, before the Fard of, uh, uh, fard of Fajr, is khairun min dunya wa fiha is better than what uh, uh, better than the dunya and what the dunya has for you okay anything the best that dunya can offer to uh, offer you now you would see people take this out of context and you would see them to be praying the sunnah while imam is leading the fard remember any fard prayer we are doing it for who fard mean it is relevant to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is sunnah and everything it comes secondary so who should we, uh, uh, who should we, uh, whose rule should we follow first? Allah or Muhammad? No, Allah. Allah comes first, then comes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a Nabi? Allah. Allah, wa ta'ala. That is why we see people are praying sunnah when the fard is ongoing. Whereas the appropriate thing to do is, when Imam is leading the fard, immediately you should join the fard. Okay. Even the Khulul Masjid is not necessary at that time. The, you know, the, the, the two prayer that you do for the, uh, for after entry, entering the Masjid, that is not permissible when Imam is already leading. Okay? So the Sunnah should be prayed after. Okay? 
وزاد الطبراني في حديث وابصة إمام الطبراني رحمة الله عليه added to the narration of وابصة رضي الله تعالى عنه ألا دخلت معهم أو اشتررت رجلا so he has this narration of Rasulullah Sallam why did you not join them or pull back a man to your position okay why did you not join them or pull back a man to your position now here there is uh, there is one thing that we need to uh, pay attention to that even though Rasulullah Sallam asked okay when there is a full row when there is a full row and there is one man behind Actually, he is the starter of that next row. At that time, his prayer is valid, even if he is by himself. If, if the first row is full here, okay, and there is no space for another person to enter, and he just came and he's, he stood straight to the, behind the imam in the second row, that is permissible. Salah is accepted. Why? Because he is by himself. He did not broke the, uh, break the fir first row, pulling someone behind. Because if that is the case, then you're totally breaking the row and you're disrupting the Salah. Okay, that is also not permissible. Next hadith is from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He is, he was from the Ahlul Sufa. Okay, he to this day is considered the, the narrator who narrated the most ahadith okay in terms of narrating ahadith from Rasulullah Sallam he is in number one after him comes Umul Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha okay so Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated altogether 5374 hadith okay to this day he is uh, uh, he is considered to be number one in terms of narrating ahadith and he used to have weak memory then Rasulullah Sallam made dua for him Alhamdulillah, later on he became, he, his memory became so sharp, mashallah, he memorized, as I mentioned earlier, 5,374 uh, 5, hadith that he narrated from Rasulullah He narrated that, Nabi uh, said, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمُ الْإِقَامَةِ فَمْشُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ When you hear the iqama, go to the salah. Okay. إذا سمعتم الإقامة فمشوا إلى الصلاة. When you hear the إقامة, then go to the صلاة. Okay. وعليكم السكينة والوقار. سكينة والوقار. You must walk to the صلاة with what? With tranquility. What is tranquility? Tranquility means peace in your heart, no hastiness, nothing. The way that some of you today run for a uh, uh, run to join Salatul Maghrib, you should not do that. You that you should have that tranquility. Take it easy. Do not rush because that rush, hastiness is actually from shaitan. Generally speaking, hastiness is from shaitan. al ajratu min shaitan Okay, so when you are walking to the Salah, you must walk to the Salah with tranquility and dignity. Wal waqar. Okay, waqar means dignity, honor. Wala tusri'u. Now, this is the important prohibition from Rasulullah Do not rush. Do not hasten. وَلَا تُسْرِعُوا فَمَا أَدْرَكْتُمْ فَصَلُّوا And whatever portion of the salah you get along with the imam, offer it. Meaning pray it. وَمَا فَاتَكُمْ فَأَتِمُّوا And complete afterwards whatever you have missed. Even if you have missed the rakah, just like one second you missed the rakah, ruku'ah. It doesn't matter. After imam, salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum, you are standing up, you are uh, completing the salah. That is how it should be. Okay, do not rush when you're coming to the salah. Okay, muttafaqun alayh. This hadith is agreed upon by Imam al Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Rahmatullah alayhima. Okay, Imam Muslim was a student of Imam al Bukhari. Rahmatullah alayh. And this wording of the hadith, wording of the hadith is actually uh, is according to Imam al Bukhari. Rahmatullah alayh. So, here the rule that we find that whatever portion of the prayer you get along with the Imam, offer it. The author rahimahullah ta'ala said that the remainder of the salah, meaning if you miss one rak'ah or two rak'ah or three rak'ah or even four rak'ah, remainder of the salah which one, which one joins behind an imam is a jama'ah, congregational prayer. Whether it should be considered as a former part of the prayer or as a latter part of the uh, prayer is again disputed point. Okay, is again disputed point. But... It is better to repeat what the uh, what you missed actually. When it comes to the Salatul Maghrib, 
it is established that Salat al-Maghrib should be prayed backward. Okay? So even if you miss, for example, any three prayers, uh, Salat al-Maghrib should be prayed the way it is. If let's say you missed Salat al-Maghrib fully, three raka'ah, you missed it. You are repeating the way that Imam prayed. You are repeating the way that you know. Okay? If you missed all that three raka'ah. As for missing three raka'ah out of four raka'ah prayers, we are talking about Salat al-Dhuhr, Salat al-Asr, and Salat al-Isha. These are the three prayers we know to be of. Four raka'ah, four units. So if you miss the first three raka'ah, and you got the last raka'ah, with the Imam, you said at tahiyyat and you continued. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah, ashhadu Muhammad abdu rasulu. You stopped there until you wait for the Imam to finish the salah. Then you stand up. Then you pray raka'ah. Surah Al-Fatiha, any surah along with Surah Al-Fatiha, then ruku, then two sajda, two prostrations, then you sit down. Because after the Imam's salam, the prayer that you, the raka'ah that you prayed is considered to be your second raka'ah. You see what I'm coming from? You're doing backward now, so that it doesn't match the actual Maghrib prayer. Maghrib prayer is unique on its own. And there are evidences suggesting that. Okay, so if you miss any three raka'ah out of any four raka'ah prayer, you need to do it backward. However, the order remains same. Why? Because whether the Imam recited in the fourth raka'ah in the surah or not, it doesn't matter. You started with Surah Al-Fatiha along with surah, uh, any surah. Then you sat down, you said at tahiyyatu after ruku, after sujood, you sat down, you said at tahiyyatu lillahi until ashadu la ilaha illa wa muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Then you stood up for the third raka'ah, saying Allahu Akbar, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah, along with it a surah. Then you you do what? You uh, you go to the ruku, then you go to the sujood. Okay, two uh, two prostration. After that, you are standing up again for the fourth raka'ah now, the final raka'ah. Then you pray Surah Al-Fatiha. If you uh, uh, know it for any other surah, but Surah Al-Fatiha is compulsory. After Surah Al-Fatiha, you are doing the ruku'ah, you are doing the two prostrations. Then you sit down at tahiyyatu until the end. Allahumma inna dhalamtu nafsi dhulman kathira. Okay, then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You see the difference now between Maghrib and how to repeat if three units out of four units are missed. If three raka'ah out of four raka'ahs are missed. Okay, this is how we need to do it. Next hadith is from Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Salatu rajuli ma'a rajul aska min salatihi wahda. Wa salatuhu ma'a rajulaini aska min salatihi ma'a rajul. Wa ma kana aktharu fa huwa ahabbu ila Allahi azza wa jal. Rawahu Abu Dawud wa nasai wa sahaha ibn Hibban. A man's prayer offered with another man is purer than his prayer which he offers alone. And his prayer with two men is purer than his prayer with one. So, two is better than one when we are doing it. If you are by yourself and you are praying fard, and let's say he, 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 pray, he prayed the fard, the, let's say you missed the maghrib, and Ziyad didn't miss the maghrib, okay? He prayed with the imam, but you just entered, and you wanted to pray maghrib with a loud voice. He will join you for him, it will be voluntary. Why? Because it is jama'ah, it is, it, is, it is more rewardable. So two people is better than one. Okay, now, two, uh, sorry, uh, one joining with uh, other is better. As for two people behind one is better than one joining with the one. You see what I'm coming from? And if they are more in number, more than two, more than three, more than four, and one salam, and it continues, more than in num more in number, it is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. It is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we learn is this that if you are praying fard and you are by yourself, and if the reward is needed, by all means go for it. As a matter of fact, Shamsa would advise you to go and uh, join the brother if he is praying fard. Okay, give him a nudge and he will recite louder. So, you see, this is the beauty of Sunnah of Rasulullah that immediately we are going to practice. Opportunity uh, has arrived. Alhamdulillah, let's do it. So, 
this is what we see that it is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mighty the majestic okay it is recorded by Abu Dawood in his Sunan and Imam Nasai in his Sunan as well Ibn Hibban rahimahullah ta'ala graded this hadith to be authentic meaning sahih next hadith is from Umm Waraqa radiallahu ta'ala anha she said, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amaraha, Rasul, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded her, anta umma ahla dariha, rawahu Abu Dawood, wa sahaha ibn Khuzaymah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded her to lead the members of her household, household in salah. Reported by Abu Dawood rahmatullahi alayhi in his sunnah, then Ibn Khuzaymah graded this hadith also to be authentic. Now here, this issue of Umm uh, Waraqa radiallahu ta'ala anha leading her household in the salah. The author mentions over here that she is bint Nawfil bint Abdullah ibn Harith. So actually she she, uh, she was cousin of Khadija bint Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anha. You remember the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Khadija? Waraqa bin Nawfil. Waraqa bin Nawfil's uh, bin Nawfil. Uh, Waraqa's sister rather. Okay. So she is bint Nawfil bint Abdullah. Or bint Abdullah ibn al-Harith ibn, uh, ibn uh, Uwaymir al-Ansariya from Medina, by the way. She compiled the Quran and requested the Prophet ﷺ to allow her to take part in the Battle of Badr. She gathered all the chapters of the Quran, all the verses of the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ used to visit her and call her the martyr, meaning the shahida. She was killed by her male and female slaves who covered her with a sheet of cloth, thus suffocating her. They then ran away, but were caught and crucified by the orders of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. You see, she was killed by her male and female slaves who covered her with a sheet of cloth, thus suffocating her. They then ran away, but were caught and crucified by the orders of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Okay. This hadith particularly indicates that it is permissible and proper for a woman to lead uh, the salah. It is a proven fact that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and Umm uh, uh, um Salama, meaning both, are, uh, both were the wives of Rasulullah they used to lead people in salah, uh, women in the salah. Okay, Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah ta'ala said that a woman, if leading salah, if she is an imam, okay, if she is leading the salah, must not stand alone ahead. Like the way that when I'm leading the prayer, I'm, uh, I'm standing. No, it shouldn't be the case. Ahead of the row, but should stand within it, meaning in the middle. And same, the way that the first row of the men is, that is how the women's row should be. Okay? If her followers include males also, then they should be none other than their mahram. The persons so closely related to her that she cannot marry them whether it is brother or whether it is father. She cannot lead a prayer of a certain gathering that includes either strangers or ghair mahram. It should be women only. Okay. She cannot lead a, a, a ghair mahram, the person is allowed to enter to uh, enter a marriage contract with her. Okay, so this is the ruling we need to pay attention to. Next hadith is from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم استخلف ابن أم مكتوم يا أم الناس وهو أعمى رواه أحمد وأبو داود ونحوه لابن حبان عن عائشة أنس رضي الله تعالى عنه narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم appointed ابن أم مكتوم meaning عبد الله ابن أم مكتوم to lead people in prayer in his absence and he meaning عبد الله ابن أم مكتوم رضي الله تعالى عنه was blind عبد الله ابن أم مكتوم رضي الله تعالى عنه was blind it is recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, Abu Dawood in his Sunan. Ibn Hibban also recorded this hadith, some, uh, recorded similar, similar hadith, but from the line of Aisha bint Abu Bakr Nasiddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Here we find a benefit that this hadith clarifies that a blind person can lead salah. Some ulama reluctantly approve of it, but this is against propriety. Some maintain that in the presence of a scholar who enjoys a perfect faculty of sight, it is improper to ask a blind scholar to lead the salah. And this view is erroneous too. The Prophet ﷺ deputed Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum anhu in his absence to lead the prayer how many times? All together Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum anhu led the prayer 
in the absence of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 13 times. Okay, remember that. 13 times Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anuma uh, led the salah in the absence of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was blind. Okay. Next hadith is from Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, son of uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sallu ala man qala la ilaha illallah wa sallu khalfa man qala la ilaha illallah wa rawahu dar qutni bi isnadin da'if. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, pray. What prayer? Al-janaza. It is meant al-janaza. Funeral prayers over him who said, Nothing deserved to be worshipped except Allah. Meaning, who said, La ilaha illallah. And pray behind him who says, La ilaha illallah. Meaning, again, it is here we are talking about the janaza. Okay. Adar Qutni rahimahullah ta'ala recorded it through a weak chain of narrators. So the ruling that we find here is this. That this only point which is intended here is that it is permissible to offer a prayer behind a praying person who neglects the offering of the wajibat. Okay? Meaning things that are compulsory, things that are obligatory. Okay? It is permissible to uh, uh, offer a prayer behind a, pray, a, a praying person who neglects the offering of the wajibat. However, such a person must never be appointed an imam. Such person should not be appointed as an imam. Okay? Such a person should never be assigned the duties to lead the prayer. As simple as it is. Okay? So, we can take a benefit from it. Even though it is weak hadith, but min bab targhib in terms of encouragement and min bab tarheeb in terms of discouragement, we need to pay attention to this. That someone who is not uh, doing wajibat, many good things that he needs to do, many compulsory and obligatory things that he misses, uh, he quite often does not do, he should not be appointed as an imam. But once in a while you can pray behind him, that's not a problem, it is permissible. If should the uh, occasion arise, okay? The last hadith of this chapter, inshallah, with this we'll finish the halaqa today, is... From the paternal cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Ali ibn Abi Talib as well as son-in-law of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that idha ata ahadukum as-salah wal imam ala hal fal yasna' kama yasna' al-imam rawahu at-Tirmidhi bi isnad dha'if if one of you comes to Salah and the Imam is at a certain position, he must do as Imam is doing. Reported by at tirmidhi with a weak chain of narrators. So Da'if again, but there is a benefit to it. Okay, because you, you want to be Muqtadi, you are going to be behind the Imam, so follow the Imam. Okay. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put Barakah in this gathering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq to act upon the ahadith that we have heard. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put this uh, attendance in the mizan of hasanat. Allahumma ameen. Hada ma'indi wal ilmu inda Allah alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unim. In asabt fa min Allahi wahdah wa in akhtaat fa min nafsi wa shaytan. Fa Allahu wa rasuluhu bari'an. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.